Ah, yeah, yeah. Like, mm. so many things are happening. Mm. So how, how do you handle, once you're trying to compose yourself, how do you deal with people who don't understand what you're mm -hmm. going through? Um, the thing about therapy is I'm the one who's going through therapy. No one else is. So when I come out into the world, every, every, every week after my session, or every two weeks after my session, when I leave that session, I'm the one who's worked on myself. The world hasn't. So the world will be just the way it was before I went in. I am the change. <laughs> That's so smart. <laughs> you know? Okay. So um, these, the, of course, it's not that every single time I handle myself now with grace and poise. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and I'm just gliding around. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. um, I still have my struggles. Like I still have mm -hmm. uh, my pain points. I also still have traumas that I am yet to discuss, right? That I don't even know that I have yet. Um, I still have whys that I don't know yet. So, of course, there's still trigger points. Um, but now I know I'm on the journey of learning. And, um, and these days also, I'm able to see um, myself walking into a trap of my own emotion uh, better than I was before. Because before, sometimes you just stumble and you don't even know what's, what's tagged you, you know? So now at least I'm more aware. But the thing about it is you've got to be aware that you're the one who's doing the work. The world is still going to be the same way. If it changes well and good, but you can't have that expectation, you've just got to work on yourself and how you handle things. Recently, there's a course I'm doing um, by a lovely lady called Dr. Patricia Muragami. It's called Breakthrough uh, Transformation Leadership, Leadership Transformation. And uh, they have this thing called, they're teaching us about called the six second rule. So whenever you're walking into something that you know is going to um, lead to some form of outburst from you or you can see someone is going to trigger you or something someone says or someone does is going to trigger you take six seconds of just silence whether you need to walk away whether you need to put some water in your mouth just do whatever you need to do to take six seconds just compose yourself and then figure out okay how do i want to respond to this and i think that's also one of the um, amazing ways that you can help yourself just you know do better mm. and be better there are a lot of things that <coughs> I want to say the younger generation, but yet even in Zesana, guys, no, it's not like that. It's not like that. Hashtag is in the morning. But there's, there's a lot of, I don't even know. I, I keep bringing up that a lot of the rate of suicide has increased mm -hmm. in Kenya. And it's mis mostly, sorry, the boy child. And mm -hmm. I was trying to have a conversation with some gentlemen and trying to figure out what's going on. And they're telling me it's just, maybe it's a hassle. They're trying to, I don't know, win over Shore. Mm -hmm. Shore is, is being bought at Range Rover. And him, all he can do is promise him, uh, promise her love or things mm -hmm. like that. Or even other things, you know, like you're, you're struggling with maybe for example, when do Wakwanza Kwenuku graduate? You know, there are all those types of expectations. You graduate, the first thing they want is a job. You don't have a job yet, you mm -hmm. yourself. All you've done is graduated. There, yeah. There's so many little, little pressures. Pressures of being a firstborn, mm -hmm. pressures of being a, a lastborn, pressures of being black and female, like now jaza, mm -hmm. as if to nale, I'm total sea water, <laughs> or, or pressures of being, yeah. you know, male and African and not having a family. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just so much going on. Yeah. How, how do you balance? How do you you know, and it's a yeah. daily struggle. Mm. When you met Lala Jana, mm. mm. yeah, Ooh, that's a that's a that's a deep question. That's a big question. Um, you know, the thing about even the African experience, the particular pressures that we have that are different. For the longest time, people thought that therapy was a Western thing, mm -hmm. right? So all we knew about therapy were how they handled Western issues. African issues are also different. There are particular pressures that we have as Africans that are different and unique to the African experience. Then there's on top of that, there's the female and the firstborn and the male and the firstborn and the first of his name or the first of her lineage and getting married and all these other pressures. Um, it's not easy. I'm not going to, there's no actually get, get better quick scheme that I can even give. You know, mm. I still have those struggles. Like now I'm in my thirties. Now the question is, okay, so like children, you know, so what's, you know, what's the plan? Mm -hmm. What's the, I'm, I'm counting down to 40. Every single day I wake up, I keep on telling Aww. myself. <laughs> it's closer than it was, you know. Um, but what I'm trying to do is also mm -hmm. live. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day, and I was telling him that the best we can do with this life is live it, because nothing is guaranteed. Like, you can be trying everything, um, running around Helter Skelter, just trying to get this done or that done. But then in that, you lose life. You lose a living, mm. you know. It's that um, it's that saying that people say that the, the older someone gets, and people ask older people about what they wish they knew when they were younger. They said they wish they just knew to live, just live your life. Mm. Your only competition is who you were yesterday. 
That's your biggest and best competition, who you were yesterday as, as in comparison to who you want to be today. Um, and taking it a day at a time also, and mm. breathing. Like, you know, sometimes you're running around in your mind with all these expectations and things you want to do, but you don't even give yourself a moment to breathe. Before you know it, it's Usiku, the next day it's the morning, you're running to the weekend, the weekend is two days, which by the way, someone needs to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> we need a day between <laughs> Sunday and Monday. Really? Please. Like, how is it possible that you work five days, then you have two days, and sometimes a day and a half if you work half day on Saturday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, in, in, in all that, in all that, just remember to breathe and live, and just take a day at a time. It's mm. the best you can do. Why is mental health so important? Not mm. just for, you know, living life but why why is mental health why is it important to call yourself for a meeting yeah. there's there's a video of, of a rasta okay rasta flani abo he says you know why are you so all up in your head why are you beating yourself up every day mm. why are you being your own worst enemy don't worry there are people who will help you do that so you need to be your best friend mm -hmm. how do you forgive yourself for example maybe if if someone pissed you off and that, that six seconds became two and before you could mm. hold it you did things or you said things you know yeah. how how yeah. do you walk through living and loving yourself because again sometimes we think that we need a partner or we need mm -hmm. a special kind of job or we need to live somewhere or we need to have a car you know to feel like we fulfilled mm -hmm. but if all that was taken away mm -hmm. all of that how do we make sure mental health is balanced mm -hmm. um for one to begin with the importance of mental health is because it runs everything it's the silent puppet master of everything in your life right um, you might think it's everything else but it's not it's what's going on up here what's going on in here that runs how you handle day-to-day -day activities a lot of times how you feel when you first wake up in the morning and that what they say about the first hour after you wake up and what you do within that hour will dictate how the entire day goes it's the same way with what happens um, at the building blocks of your life when you're younger a lot of the time dictates how you act as an adult. Um, it's really important to be able to work through these things, to be able to live in your fullness, right? So that's the importance of, of mental health because it really does run everything behind the scenes. Um, and and without, without dealing with the mental health issues, which by the way, as a country, we're also doing quite a lot right now. There's a lot of talk out there about mental health. There's a lot of people on social media who are doing such beautiful work around mental health. There's Edgar Odiambo Jamlek who does amazing work talking about men when it comes to the mental health sphere. There's Dr. Vundi who's um, handling something called the Wellness Clinic. She's a wellness doctor and she just speaks about mental health from a doctor's perspective. So there's so many people out there who are having those conversations now. And I think it really shows the importance of it. I think people thought that think that some people might think that it's a prob it's an issue that we're discussing now, but it's something that's been there all through. It's just that now we are really having those, those discussions. Now we're having more reports of people, um, young people committing suicide. Within this season of COVID, we've had a lot of a lot of deaths um, um, around around suicide. You know, of young people who are um, giving up and you know are done and exhausted. And a lot of people are saying, you know, I never knew. Right, and that's the question that we're trying to avoid with the mental health conversation. The I never knew conversation. Let people be, have a space where they can talk things out. They can have a safe space where they can um, get into the tough topics so that things can be easier. Right? Yeah. How would you talk to someone who maybe is trying to reach out, mm -hmm. and they're being told it's you're seeking attention, you're attention seeking? How how do you just mm -hmm. even deal with that? How do you? What if you discovered maybe someone? Yeah, you have to give me goosebumps. How? That sounds yeah. painful, sweetie. It does. Eh. But let me tell you, the thing about the release is it, 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 it almost feels better than the pain. Yeah? Yeah. So um, I really, from a personal standpoint, I really understand the, the appeal within the self-harm. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in it, you feel like that's the only way out. Mm -hmm. I completely get that. But I'm here to tell people that there is, it gets better and there are better ways to handle it. And if you have someone right now who's telling you that you're seeking attention, you're talking to the wrong person. You're definitely talking to the wrong person and that person is the one you need to stop talking to because mm -hmm. you're not seeking attention. You're going through something and it's okay and it's going to be okay. You just need to be able to find the right places to, to, um, to let out that emotion, the right people to talk to who can guide you to places where you can get help. I don't know if it's the therapy, but you came in here in the, in like 10 seconds, you were just friendly with everyone. You would even crack like five <laughs> jokes, like we were friends, all mm -hmm. of us, despite other people not knowing who you are. Is that, 
Is that something still linked to mental health? Because you're so at peace. Yeah. Like, you're so, at, you're so chill. All right. Mm. I, you know, the thing is, not every day is the same. Yesterday was a bad day for me. Mm. Yesterday was just, I wasn't feeling very balanced. I was, I was low. My spirit was feeling low. Um, but as I said, it's a day at a time. I woke up today and I was like, you know what? So I have the opportunity today to go on TV and be able to have a great conversation about something I'm very passionate about. Take this moment. If the next moment, once I leave here, is a low moment, then I'll get through that moment. Um, so uh, sometimes I even take it moment by moment, live alone day by day. Sometimes I take this moment and embrace it. And if the next moment is a bad one, then it's a bad one. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that. I think I've been able to understand also that this is not the entirety of my story. This one bad moment or this one bad phase is not the entirety of my story. The next moment might be better. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes the best way to get out is to just get through. Mm, yeah. That's deep though. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> We've not even gotten to how wonderful you are as a plus side mom, but what what you. gave you that courage? Aki, because Thank we don't you. see many of those around. Yeah. And you kill it. Thank you, sis. And, and then it's and it's always true. Thanks, like girl. it's always true. Thank what what you. got you on that boat? Oh, wow. My plus size journey is also just a, a, an, an interesting one for me as well. Um, I, I struggled for a very long time with my body and I struggled a lot with um, finding things to wear, feeling sexy, feeling pretty, feeling hot. Um, and I listened a lot to the outside voices and that is what gave me the validation. Um, but as of, uh, as of last year, 2019, um, a friend of mine called Yvette told me, you know what, just start documenting. You love clothes, you love looking pretty, you love getting dolled up and get dressed up. So every time you have a reason to, take a photo and put it on Instagram. What's the worst that would happen? And then I started, and I started on my friend Alexia's birthday last year. Mm -hmm. um, put up my first Instagram post. And from there, it, I think also just getting the love out there and hearing people who uh, would ask, where can I get that? Because they were struggling themselves with figuring out mm -hmm. where, to get, um, where to get pieces. Mm -hmm. They were struggling, they were struggling to figure out where to get pieces for themselves. Um, they were struggling with feeling pretty and feeling hot. Um, and then feeling like um, I was also allowing them to have a voice almost by just putting up my photos and seeing where I got the clothes. That also gave me confidence in itself. So a lot of people think that I walked into social media with the confidence, you know, of a thousand bah, people. Bah, 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 bah. No. Uh -huh. the peop it's, guys on, it's you guys on social media who gas me up, who built my confidence as well. Like it's grown as you guys have watched. Um, and also with that, I also have bad days. There are days I wake up and nothing is fitting. You know, there are days I just am bloated and nothing is working. <laughs> I can relate. You know, I really can. That is just mm. nothing works. The mm. eyeliner refuses to cut. You know, the eyebrows are not the sisters. They're not cousins. <laughs> like, they just is nothing is working. Um, but I think I'm, I'm, also, I'm also seeing my beauty externally as well in as much as I'm working on the internal. I'm seeing my beauty and I'm seeing and I'm appreciating it. Um, so that journey, it's been, it's been an interesting journey. I had started off as just a plus size influencer and plus size fashion influencer. And I'm trying to expand myself on social media as well because there's more to me than just plus size fashion. Um, and Jason J. Tukapik is actually the one who told me, you know, don't fit yourself in a box when you're more than just that one box. So I guess these conversations are my attempt at expanding myself in this space and then just seeing where I can make a home. My favorite thing about what you've just said is you're learning to see your beauty. Mm. I can relate because, sweetie, that things about me, it's taken me so long, mm. so long just to embrace. Yeah. And then sometimes I, I meet people who now think Nikona Maringo or Lies, it's it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic because now you're judging me for something that's taken me so long to love about myself. Mm -hmm. And then on this other side, I see someone who is just not loving themselves at all and I mm -hmm. won't tell them, boy, sweetie. Yeah. Boy, boy, <laughs> boy, boy. Who are you waiting to love you? Mm -hmm. Just love yourself. Love everything about you. Mm -hmm. Love everything about you because even if you want to subject yourself to change which is fine it's okay because yeah. i you know i do things that enhance myself a bit mm -hmm. but it started from i love this mm -hmm. maybe let's make it better you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. how would you tell somebody maybe who who who's a plus side shorty mm -hmm. but it's just confused because now tv has said if you don't have flat stomach <laughs> Nowadays, you have to be flat stomach with hips oh, and an yeah. ass. And now I think we have to be short also if we're tall, it's a yes. problem. <laughs> like, there's so much. We have to be a little bit light-skinned, not so much. Yes. Eh, 
Yeah. So oh, how yeah. how would you just sh mm. sure don't be don't be influenced out here, mm. especially when you're a teenager when mm. your hormones zoop piga piga yeah. kinto. How yeah. would you talk to someone like that? Um, wow. There's one thing I hold true in my life based on even practice, so that I I, I keep on saying a lot of the things I'm saying so that I do them perfectly, but I try. Mm -hmm. The most conversations you have in a day are with yourself. The least you can be is kind. Mm. Like it's the least you can do with yourself. Like. You, you spend so much time talking to yourself and all you talk is negative and even what you take in is negative sometimes even just look at your instagram feed if you're a plus size girl i would tell you han you need to stop following just kim kardashian shaped mm -hmm. women look for plus size women and there are so many beautiful amazing plus size women out there in fashion in mental health in fitness even there's an amazing uh, plus size woman who is an ayogi those shorties can do you, things exactly. I can't even do. Yeah, yo. You know? Hey. <laughs> okay. And they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, there are even plus size women who are like really diligent in their fitness, right? So um, also what you feed yourself. If you're constantly just on social media, all you follow are people who look a particular way, are shaped a particular way. You're a beautiful dark skinned girl, but you don't follow a leg work on Instagram. Hey. You're just following every single light-skinned person you can find. Mm. Um, you're also doing a disservice to yourself. And then how you speak about yourself to yourself. Um, that's also really important. And by, by that and by those steps, you will even find that the people you surround yourself with, you're careful that you're not surrounding yourself with people who speak negatively to you, about you. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, because sometimes when you're wallowing in your own self-pity, it's very easy to surround yourself with people who will make you feel worse about yourself. Who will tell you. Preach, uh, right? Yeah, you're, You look cute, but... You know, you're pretty for a plus size girl. You know, um, you're cute for a dark skin girl. Mm -hmm. There's always, you know, the, those backhanded compliments, but you're surrounding yourself with people who are giving you those things because that's how you're feeling about yourself. So, um, the, it, it's, it's the journey to love your body is not a one day journey, but it's a possible journey. You just need people to surround yourself with things that enhance that. You know, you don't have to love makeup to be the most beautiful girl in the room. Mm. The thing about it, I think a lot of people think that you have to um, uh, be, you have to ha be into wigs, you have to be into weaves, you have to be into heels, you have to be into makeup. You can also be pretty and beautiful just the way you are, mm -hmm. you know? That's a Tara Shreli song, actually, isn't yes! it? Yes! <laughs> it started immediately playing yeah. when you said that. Uh -huh. Right. So, um, there's no... And th th also, mm -hmm. you don't have to not wear makeup because you think that's what beauty standards are because some guy told you that he doesn't like babes with makeup. Like, if you love makeup, hand buy all the palettes, all of them. Have every rainbow <laughs> color you can think of. If he thinks that naturally your eyelids are blue, then that's his problem. You know what I'm saying? And it's waterproof. Exactly. <laughs> right. If wear that make waterproof mascara, do what it is that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to be bald, recently my friend cut off her hair, and I think she, she looks amazing right now. Right? I know that doesn't work because my head shape does not <laughs> those two those things don't go together because i tried cutting my hair it doesn't work do what works for you mm -hmm. find what works for you and um don't always try going with the mold figure out what is a you thing and go with that right but um especially for the plus size girls out there i want to tell you you're beautiful you're so beautiful you just have to believe that first let me tell you what confidence sexiness is confidence it, that's true it's just confidence the way you give that they can look on the <laughs> camera ah, it doesn't care whether your pear shape apple so three, coca cola butter it doesn't matter mm, it's, it's all in the attitude it's okay true. and maybe my hopefully my last question cozy conversation <laughs> how do we how do we be part of helping a society become a place where girls don't fight girls. Mm. At it, oh, just because oh, you like makeup. Yeah. I I hate makeup. Even those girls who just wear makeup, Ama, it's yeah. it's oh you, you're doing this or you're prospering here. Why can't we just grow together? How mm. how do you think a garden grows, guys? It's mm. not one flower, it's different oh, wow, in one so space, you yeah. know? How can we be helping our sisters? Sana sana wadogo, ah cha na it's okay, don't be fine. Yeah. How yeah. do we give them that confidence and, and just joy and respect to live with their own sisters yeah. without kum, kum kito? Mm. If, for example, maybe you were working and I wasn't, I won't be happy for you until I get my time okay. to shine, you know? Mm -hmm. Because life is about seasons. How do we do that? Mm. I think first we need to stop that line for women are their worst own, own worst enemies. Mm. We need to stop saying it. Because the more you say something, the, the more, more you leave it, mm. the more it becomes true. Because that thing has become such an 
age old adage like we always say you know the worst we, women just enemies, enemies each other the people who talk the worst about women are each women. other the women who will hold you back in the workspace hey women. preach i think one of the biggest fears when you start working is to have a female boss mm -hmm. because you all know that if your boss is female you can't dress her because she will, you know, she will pinpoint you out. She won't like you. So you have to be simple because you don't be self. You, she doesn't want you to get her job. There are so many um, lies that people tell each other about women. And it's women who see them also. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop saying it. We need to start believing the opposite, that we are our biggest cheerleaders, we are our biggest supporters. Because I think if there's something we are seeing right now in the world, it's that women are really cheering women on. Of course, out there, you'll have one, two people who will be your naysayers, quote-unquote haters, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know. Um, but I don't think that is a gender-based thing. You might have even men who think that, you know, mm -hmm. you're you're not worth anything, or you're not as, as big as you seem to be, or who try to put you down. Um, so it's important to first of all start speaking differently, and then start being differently. Um, be that change you want to see, literally. <laughs> if you are in the workspace, and there's someone who you see who's struggling with one, two, three things, a young lady, help her out. It's the least you can do. If you um, if you see um, if you're somewhere and you see a young lady, um, maybe for example, she's uh, her flies open for her jeans, let her know. You know, cover your another woman's nakedness. Um, love on other women on social media. When you see her in something cute and something pretty, don't just like the guys' photos without their shirts. You see a babe out here in a costume, <laughs> like it, comment. Mm -hmm. You know, show love. Um, I think once we start speaking differently then we start being differently, then that is it. Like we will, we will have changed the entire course of everything. Um, and, for, and for the younger women, I think it's a, it's a given. There's a lot of things that we can learn from them. I think that if there's something I'm realizing about the younger generation, they are very confident. Like there's something about their confidence. There's, there's nothing that towards them. I've, I've had conversations with young ladies who know, like they know themselves, they know wow. things. Uh, of course they have their struggles, but they are so much more self-aware than we were at their age, at the ages of 19, 20, 21. Uh, and it's such a beautiful thing to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, I mean, all oh, most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and where we can fill the gaps for them, let's do that with love, mm -hmm. you know? Not with Ujwaji, you know, for um, I know better than you. Mm -hmm. It's for I'm here to help you. If you need someone, if you need a hand to hold, here yeah. um, I am. I've met some amazing young ladies on social media, especially after my story, and I'm loving um, working with them and the journey of just getting to know them and seeing, you know, the struggles that they're going through and then looking back and saying um, things that my mom used to say for, you know, at that age, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and seeing myself in that, in that same scenario um, years ago and, and helping them walk through where I can. Uh, but yeah, the, be, being a big sister, even being a small sister, to older ladies, you mm -hmm. know, where you can assist them. Um, there are a lot of things that they are learning now, especially Never in technology. Thought of it in reverse. Right. Yeah. You're also a small sister to someone. You can, there's, there's value in that in itself, you know. Um, they are, these, whether it's you're helping them in technology when it comes to work things, or you're helping them in life things, just by um, telling them things, that lessons that you have learned now that maybe they are still learning in their older age. Um, you can reach out across the board. Mm. Yeah. I love that you, you love yourself first and then you f go forward and True. love others. True. There's a picture where someone is wearing a battery. Alafu anajimalizia, it's at red, like mm -hmm. they're done, but they're giving it to someone else who's almost full. So basically what we're saying is don't finish yourself just to help someone. That's that. Don't do it. Okay. We gotta leave now, we gotta mm -hmm. go because time has told us to, but maybe your last remarks and how again we can find you and mm -hmm. support you. Actually, that last thing you said is so true. Your cup has to run it over. Like, um, what's in the cup is supposed to be yours. What's outside the cup, what flows out is supposed to be for people. You're not supposed to give from your cup. Because I, I think that's what also leads to resentment. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, if you're constantly giving what's supposed to be yours to other people, the, the greatest commandment said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you're supposed to be loving yourself. And you will find it very hard to love your neighbor if you don't know how to love yourself. Or you'll expect your neighbor to, to love you the way you should be loving exactly. yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Love starts in once and moves out. So um, it's Dushikuri on Instagram, wild underscore succulent on 
Twitter and yeah, I've I've really enjoyed this. Thank you for mm, coming. Thank <laughs> you for coming. I'm sure you've changed thank someone's you. life. We I once talked so. about suicide and that same day someone said they were they almost committed oh suicide. You'd never know who you're talking to. You oh never wow. know who you're talking to. So oh wow. I really hope if, if you were about to give up, please don't mm. do it. Don't do it. We still need you here. Where are you going? Where mm. are you going? Why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag is why in the morning. It's at White Five on Facebook, White Five Four channel on Twitter. Please do not go away. We're about to engage in another conversation before we wrap it up.